What is up everyone, Movie Worm back again with another video and today is going to be my unwatched movie collection. So these are going to be all the Blu-rays that I have not watched yet. Now I have done this video before with the full intention of conquering my collection if you like. But then I was given a whole load of Blu-rays in a free haul of my fiance's brother. There was about 30 odd titles there <laughs> and I hadn't seen about 30 of them. <laughs> So it did back up my library there, but I couldn't refuse a load of free Blu-rays that he was just going to get rid of or maybe just give away. I thought, why not? I'm a collector. I'll take them. And I do thank Stephen very much for that. Uh, that was a few months ago now. Now, this collection was once at 100. Then I whittled it down to about 60 when I made that video. And then I got them, so it went back to about 90. But I've got it down to about 30, 32 titles here now. So... I don't intend to ever make this video ever again. <laughs> so this is probably my last chance to sort of go through it. And I have seen John from Mondo Chelovic Movies make this video a while ago. That's what inspired me to do it. Because I remember watching that video and just thinking, wow, you need to watch that one or avoid that one. So I was sort of talking <laughs> to the screen, if you like, or shouting at him, <laughs> saying, oh, just watch this one. It's incredible. And he had no idea what the movie was like. So... It'd be fun if you guys could get in the comments and let me know what these films are like because I have not seen any of them. So, I know I've mentioned a few times in my end of month vlogs that I just want to get down to zero. I do. It's, it's like a little bit of a, a, a rule I've set myself now. I'm not buying any movies that I haven't seen or I'm trying not to unless a good offer comes up where I can't, I can't refuse it. So once I get through this collection, I'll start buying a lot of films that I've got on my list that I really want to see. But it's just annoying, really, when I haven't seen every movie in my collection. So I just want to get through these and then I'll start, you know, blind buying a little bit more again. But for now, I'm not really blind buying. So, yeah, let me know in the comments which movies I should go for first, which ones are, are very good. <laughs> I'm going to watch them all anyway, but it'd just be fun to interact with you all and... Yeah, getting some thoughts on these films because it might push me to watch one a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I'm going to get a lot through a load of them this month, which is July at the time of filming because there's a lot of new films coming out I'm looking forward to. But I'm going to try and get, I'm strong going to try and whittle it down a little bit at least. But I've done this in order of how long I've owned this blue, these Blu-rays, which is an interesting order in itself, although the last load were given to me, so they'll be all about the same. But this is the movie I have owned the longest in this collection. And I have seen half of it, but I turned it off because I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> and that is Serenity. Now, the last time I'd done this video, I did actually show this off. And I think it was Big Paul, he said, you need to watch Firefly, these TV series, to get a bit more knowledge about how this movie works. So I am going to try and watch that. In between conquering this collection and this might be one of the last movies i watch but from what i've seen of it it did look actually quite good there was a lot of great action and stuff i just i was really really lost i don't know this is a highly regarded film so i am definitely going to watch firefly and get around to this at some point but i've owned this now for about five years <laughs> something like that um i love the cinematography and then stuff it looked really good but like i said I'm, i think i'm gonna have to watch firefly first before i get into this one Next up, I seen this really, really cheap on a good offer years ago, and I loved the first one. And the fact that Casper Van Dien is back in this made me want to purchase it. And that is Starship Troopers 3, Marauder. The problem I keep putting this one off with is I haven't seen Starship Troopers 2. Now, I can't remember if that was an animated film or not, but I just don't see it anywhere in the wild, in the shops or anything. And it's kind of putting me off watching this one, because I don't know if I need to watch Starship Troopers 2 before watching this. I'll probably have to do a little bit more research on that. But if any of you know let know the answer to that, let me know. Because I love Starship Troopers 1 so much and Casper Van Dien is the star of that movie, I had to pick this up and have it in the collection. So, don't know too much about it. I know it's probably not going to be as good as the original, but I'll get around to it at some point. But just need to know about the second one there, really. Next up is a movie that my dad bought and just said, throw it in your collection. And that is Alan Partridge, Alpha Popper. I've been putting this off for a while because I'm not the biggest Alan Partridge fan. Admittedly, I haven't seen too many, too much of his stuff. I've seen little snippets of his TV shows. And to be honest, I did laugh now and again, but he just, he's not really for me. 
But I've heard this movie is actually really good, so yeah, I will give it a watch at some point, because like I said, I'm going to watch them all, but it's not really high on the list. Um, but I think this one might surprise me, because I've heard so many people say it's really, really good. Next up is Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool. Uh, I think my nan actually bought this one and gave it to me when she watched it. Uh, I know there's a lot of scenes filmed in Liverpool. Annette Benning is really, really a great actress. I loved her in American Beauty. She was the best thing about that film for me. And you got Jamie Bell in there, who's not a bad actor either. I think it's about them two in a relationship and he's just way younger than her. Not that it matters, but it just sort of plays on that a little bit. I, I don't know anything else about it other than I think it's a pretty sad story. Um, but I'm looking forward to this one, actually. I've just got to be in the mood for it, I think. Next up is the only Arrow video title that I haven't seen. I was just double checking there, but that is Rollerball. Um, James, oh, I forgot his name, James Khan, of course, uh, is the star of this movie. I, I've heard it's like a brutal sport that they have to play. And I don't know too much else apart from that, but I'm, I'm sure I've heard people say it's not all about that, that other elements brought into the film and stuff, but I'm not sure. When I read the back though, it really does intrigue me to watch it. I just don't know why I haven't got around to it, especially with it being an arrow title. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to this one. Uh, sounds like a good concept. I love a good sports movie. I don't know how, how much sports focus there is, but that sounds like it's going to be sports movie with a bit of a grim twist however i don't know too much now this is a film that my dad tells me to watch all the time i always say to my fiance she'll put her on she goes i do want to watch it i've just got to be in the mood for it but <laughs> that is pride another british movie i think this is about um hang on so it's a, it's, it's about the lbg lgbt community helping the miners out i think Something like that, uh, but there's a lot of there's a great cast in there. You got Paddy Considine and stuff. That guy off 1917. I'm really struggling to remember his name. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do want to watch this. It is very very high on the list because when my dad recommends a movie, it's usually good. He's watched told me to watch a handful of films, and every time he tells me, they end up being great. So my dad sort of watches films that I wouldn't really go to, like. He told me to watch Frailty, Dead Man's Shoes. I didn't listen to him for years about that, and it was a massive mistake. I watched it really late, and it's one of my favourite films now. So when my dad says this good, I know it's probably going to be good. Seen a few people tweeting about that the other day as well. I think it was on TV. Next up is a film that I really should have watched by now. I've owned this for quite a while as well, a couple of years. And that is Serpico. Al Pacino is my favourite actor of all time, so I really should have watched this by now. And when I was looking at the back the other day, I didn't realise that Sidney Lumet directed this. So that's got me a little bit more intrigued now because, of course, he made 12 Angry Men, which is one of the best films I've ever seen. So I really do need to watch this. Sounds like my type of film. I think he's trying to bring a ring of corrupt police officers down. And he's a police officer himself and they sort of turn on him. Sounds like my type of movie. Don't know why I haven't watched it yet. This is a, a Eureka Masters of Cinema edition. Um, I think this is going to be near the top of the list, really, along with Pride there. Next up is The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yes, I heard a lot of people say this was terrible. And I just sort of bought it years ago to complete my Spider-Man collection. However, the fact that Electro is going to be in the next Spider-Man film makes me want to watch it even more. So... I don't think my fiance is going to be up for this one. I'll probably just watch it on my own at some point. Because she hasn't been seen the first Amazing Spider-Man. Don't really have any intention of watching that. So I'll just sneak this one in on my own, I think. Um, plus we're in a different Spider-Man universe now and everything. It's kind of one of them that's just like... I feel like it's got to be watched. So, yeah. I've heard it's not great. But I, I'm still kind of looking forward to it. I, I do like Spider-Man. He's one of my favourite superheroes, so I really should have watched that by now. Next up is Lion. Now, this is a movie that Razor Wire Ryan Luke, who's on that channel, he's been on YouTube for a while now. I heard them talking about this film a while ago, and I thought, oh, that always pops up in Palm on that one, so I'll have to pick it up next time I'm there. And of course, when I went there, there was about 50 copies of it, so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to grab this. Because he said it was a really, really good film. Dev Patel is such a great actor. 
And you got Rooney Mara in there, who's not bad either. The girl with the dragon tattoo. I kind of liked it in Nightmare on Elm Street, although she was in Nancy Thompson, of course. The, well, Heather Langenkamp, should I say. But I'm looking forward to this. It just seems like a bit of a feel-good drama movie. But don't know too much about it. I have heard a lot of people say they like this film, though. And this International Film of the Year and two BAFTA awards. So it must have something about it. But it yeah. But, yeah. It must have something about it, mustn't it? Next up is Sunshine on Leith. Sam, my fiance, her dad bought her this, bought us this because we were talking about it in the garden and stuff. I've got to be in the mood for a musical, hence why I haven't really watched it yet. But my friend Warren always says this is a good movie as well, so I'll have to get round to this one um, soon. But I do like a British movie. I'm just not a big, massive musical fan. Like I said, I've got to be in the mood, but. Just haven't seen this one yet, I'm afraid. Now next up is a film that <laughs> I'm just going to have to find about three hours for. Because it's a long one. And that is Seven Samurai. However, this is, I think it's number 21 on the IMDb Top 250. So that says everything, doesn't it? This must be, this must be a really good film. <laughs> I mean, to be rated so highly. About, I think it's about a band... This village that gets robbed every year and they hire seven samurais to protect them. Sounds like a good concept, actually. So, yeah, I've just got to find three and a half hours for myself with no one in the house and stuff so I can just sit down and focus and watch this. Hence the reason I haven't watched it yet. But I did want it in the collection because, because it was so high on the IMDb Top 250. So, just haven't got around to this yet. I know Lucas, the filmmaker, thinks this is a brilliant film. So, hopefully soon, but like I said, I need the time. Next up is Enemy of the State. Now, I did watch this years and years ago when it first came out, but not all of it, and I can't remember too much about it, but I do love a Good Will Smith film. Uh, I, I just don't, I don't know why I haven't watched it. Yeah, I don't. Um, I think it plays with futuristic ways of looking at people on CCTV and stuff. I think that's what I remember of it. Cameras are going around corners and stuff like that. I think it is anyway, but I can't remember anything about it. I really can't. And like I said, I didn't watch the whole film anyway. But I do love, like I said, I do like Will Smith. So I'm looking forward to checking this one out, really. But there's people jumping at the screen now, isn't it? Going, oh my God, watch any of the state. <laughs> it's a popular movie, I know that. Next up is Mud. This is a Matthew McConaughey film. I think it's got Reese Witherspoon in there as well. I think he has to escape because he's on the run and he goes to some island and he's holed up there uh, hiding from the police i think or other drug dealers or something from bounty hunters it says here on the remote island of mississippi okay sounds like an interesting one i've heard this is a really really good film actually i've heard it's a lot of reviews and everything saying it was great five star there from the observer so yeah i do like matthew mcconaughey love reese witherspoon so this could be an interesting duo of, cat, of actors and that, well, an interesting cast duo if you like. And this one, I think this will be good. I'm looking forward to this one really. Next up is Cowboys vs Aliens. I remember I went on a big music magpie spree. And the movies are just going for like a pound each or something, or like five for eight pound. <laughs> and I grabbed this as part of the deal. Just haven't got round to it yet. I do think it'll be a fun movie. My granddad even liked this, and he doesn't like anything, <laughs> but he even said this was a fun film. Got Daniel Craig in there, Harrison Ford as well, I didn't realise he was in that. So yeah, this could be a fun one. Looks like my type of film, Cowboys vs Aliens, I'm all over that. So yeah, just haven't got round to it yet, but I, I do think this might be a fun one. Next up is Star Trek. Now this is where it gets into the haul that I was given for free of my fiance's brother. So Stephen, once again, thank you for all these movies. However, the last one was a subscriber mail video uh, movie, and I'll get get to that when I get to it. So I got that all these movies that are coming up around the same time. Now Star Trek is a film that I was actually gonna buy on Blu-ray when I first got my Blu-ray player. Um, I just I've never seen the TV show or anything, and I didn't know if it linked to that or whatever. So I just kept putting it off and putting it off. However, I was on a stream with John Perry from Mondo Chilliwick Movies and he did confirm to me that it's sort of its own thing. So it's intrigued me to watch it a little bit more now. So 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm not a Trekkie or anything like that. Only ever seen snippets of the show, so I don't really know what to expect with this film at all. But I've heard it's quite decent, so... Yeah, and next up plays into this one, that is Star Trek Into Darkness. I don't know if the sequel is meant to be better than the first one or anything. Um, but it's got, it's got, um, what's his name? Chris Pine in there, who I do like. I enjoyed a few of his films in the past. So, uh, yeah, like I said, I don't know too much about Star Trek in general, but I'm looking forward to watching these two films now that I know that it does its own thing, doesn't link too much to the TV show. And by the way, I'm probably never going to watch the Star Trek TV show. There's just too many episodes, too many different types of series and stuff. I'm probably never going to get into something like that. But I am going to watch them films at some point. Next up is Eagle Eye, a Shia LaBeouf film. I've... I don't know if this is kind of like Enemy of the State, really, where it's all high-tech CCTV watching you and stuff. It's just the word eagle eye makes me think that. But I've heard a few people say this is an okay film. I think Shia LaBeouf was casting this because of his stardom with Transformers and stuff. I know this goes for really cheap everywhere. There's so many of these Blu-rays just out there. You can find this very easily. I'm not sure I fancy it too much, but you never know. I might be surprised. Next up is The Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian. Now, I have just watched the first one because I was given that as well. Haven't got round to Prince Caspian yet. I, I'm i not entirely sure here, but I don't know if the older brother is Prince Caspian now. I think that was the end of the first one. And he really did irritate me in the first movie. So I don't know... If I'm looking forward to this one too much, if he's going to be the main focus or anything, but I might be wrong there. This guy might be Prince Caspian. I, I can't quite remember the ending too much uh, of the first one, but I did enjoy the film. I did. So I will watch this one. I just hope it doesn't too focus too much on him. However, he might be better in this film. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I think we, we might watch this one pretty soon after just watching the first one not too long ago. Next up is Robin Hood. Now, I have never seen a Robin Hood film in my life. Not that I can remember anyway. So, I've just kept putting this one off, really. I, th I just think it looks a little bit dull and grim. I don't know why. This is a steelbook, by the way. <laughs> I, I, I just, I've got to be in the mood for this one. I've put it off for so long. Like I said, it just looks a bit morbid, really. But I might be wrong. I might really enjoy this film. I don't know. <laughs> I've heard it's not the best Robin Hood movie. Heard the best one is with Kevin Costner, I believe. Now, next up is two films I'm really not looking forward to whatsoever because I was given the first one and I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. And that is Underworld Evolution and Underworld Rise of the Lichens or Leachens, is it? I think they're the other name for werewolves. Um, yeah, I, I, I just thought this was trying to be the Matrix in a vampire world, vampire gothic world, if you like. And it just didn't work for me. The first 20 minutes were okay, and then it just went off a cliff. And it dragged and dragged and dragged. So I'm really not looking forward to these two. I really aren't. Really, I'm not. <laughs> but I will watch them. Don't think my fiance is going to be watching these, because she didn't like the first one at all. So I might have to just find some time where I can watch them on its own. But, yeah. Hopefully they surprise me and I like them a little bit better. Sometimes when you go into a film and you think it's going to be terrible, it's not always the case. So, Underworld Evolution and Underworld Rise of the Lichens. Let me know if they're better than the first one. Now, next up is a movie, is a video game based movie, but it's a video game I've never played, and that is Prince of Persia Sands of Time. In fact, I have played Prince of Persia Sands of Time, but that was on the PSP and I didn't get very far in it. But I have never played the PS2 version or anything. I think it was Sands of Time on a PSP. It was a Prince of Persia game anyway. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, Ben Kingsley, is that? Didn't even notice. Um, could be good. I do like Jake Gyllenhaal. But I, I, I've heard this isn't a great film, to be honest. But who knows? It's a film that doesn't get talked about by anyone. Totally under the radar. No one really cares for it, from what I know. Maybe I'll like it. I don't know. 
Next up is The Wolverine, uh, the second standalone Hugh Jackman film, I think, after X-Men Origins. X-Men Origins, everyone hated that film and I really, really enjoyed it. I really liked the whole location of the farmhouse and stuff. So this one might be up my street. Um, I've never seen uh, Logan either, but maybe I'll watch Logan after watching this. I've heard Logan is amazing. But this is one that you just see everywhere you go, isn't it? In every store that you go in, <laughs> it's just always there. It's always in Powerland, CEX, everywhere. Haven't got around to it yet. I don't really fancy it that much, to be honest. But going off X-Men Origins, which I liked, this one might be for me. I'm not really a massive fan of the X-Men films. I did love X-Men First Class, though. I thought that was amazing. And the one after that, Days of Future Past, wasn't bad either. First three, I'm not really that big on. I'll, I'm not going to lie. Next up is Aragon. I've heard this was a big budget film back in the day, but it kind of flopped at the box office. I might be wrong there, but I'm sure that's what I heard. Um, don't know too much about it. Jennifer Lawrence in this. That looks like her on the front cover. Didn't even realise. I might be wrong, but it does look like her. Jeremy Irons. I'm kind of intrigued now. John Malkovich. Hey, I'm going to have to watch this. I didn't even know them three were in that. Um, I think it's Jennifer Lawrence. I might be wrong. But, uh, yeah, fantasy isn't my most loved drama. And as you can tell by some of these films, Stephen is into the fantasy side of things. I don't know. I don't know what anything what to expect about this film whatsoever. I know there's a game on the 360, though, early in the 360's life cycle. So, but I, I just don't know anything about it. I don't. I just know it's about dragons, so... Next up is The Bourne Legacy. I have seen the first three films. I like them, especially the first two. A lot of people don't want to meet them the best, but I do like the first two better. This might be interesting, seeing Jeremy Renner in the role instead. I feel like this is going to feel very standalone-ish compared to them three, just because it's a different actor and it probably is going down a different story. And it even says introduces a brand new hero. So it's nothing to do with the Matt Damon character. But who knows, I might enjoy it. I've heard it's a good action film, but not as good as the other three, so it doesn't fill me with too much confidence. Next up is The Phantom of the Opera. I think this is another musical. Don't know too much about it. Don't fancy this whatsoever. <laughs> uh, I did like The Phantom of the Opera movie from the Universal Monsters box set, though, so maybe this might surprise me. But I think it's a musical, so that sort of put me off just a little bit there. But who knows? Who knows? Next up is another video game based movie, and that is Heavenly Sword. I've never ever played the game, but seeing as I was getting this for free, I just took it anyway. But I read the back just before doing this video, and it does actually intrigue me. It sounds like a good one. Um, basically, it's this sword. If you use it, you can be very powerful, but it starts to drain your life. And this girl may have to use it to save everyone, knowing the consequences, which... Doesn't sound too bad in itself. I'm not really looking forward to it that much, though. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Stephen, who gave me this, has played the game. And he said it's way off what the game's like and stuff. And he used terrible voice characters and stuff. But uh, I'll watch it at some point. Nearly there, guys. Nearly there. Next up is The King's Speech. I am actually looking forward to this one. I just know I'm going to get a brilliant performance from Colin Firth, like he usually do. But I feel like... He's going to put his whole effort into this. I've heard he really does give a standout performance. And it could be an interesting one. Uh, so, yeah. Is that Helena Bonham Carter in this as well? Which, yeah, quite interesting. I'm learning more things about these movies as they go, as this video goes on, actually. And it's sort of making me interested a bit more in them. But I am looking forward to this. Me, me fiancé is as well. So we are going to sit down and watch this at some point. Um... I hope it's not too boring or anything, but I've got a feeling I will like it. I, I know it won loads of awards and stuff. Seven BAFTAs, uh, four Academy Awards, Best Picture, Best Actor, Best Director, Best Original Screenplay. Must have something about it. It must do. Next up is two films in this box set that I have not yet seen. Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides and Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. I got them two mixed around there. Sorry. <laughs> at World's End is the third one. On Stranger Tides at the fourth. Recently just watched Curse of the Black Pearl and Dead Man's Chest. So we are getting through this box set. I don't have the fifth one in there, but I can watch that on Disney Plus if I want. 
I liked Black Pearl, didn't love it, I think it's slightly overrated, but I did really like Dead Man's Chest, that was a way better film. They do drag though, they are on for very, very long, I think the time could be cut on them a little bit. Jack Sparrow is such a good character though, I've heard Stranger Tides isn't very good, but I've heard that World's End is, and I've heard Salazar's Revenge, the fifth one, is terrible, but I'm kind of looking forward to these two, I'm not going to lie, because I did enjoy the first two. And the last film on this unwatched Blu-ray collection, if you like, is Untouchable. This was gifted to me in a subscriber mail video by Tom180, a subscriber who's been with me for quite some time now. So, Tom, once again, thank you for this. Um, I, I've heard this is one of the best films ever made. So, I, I, this is one that's top of the list. I do want to get round to it soon, especially to give my thoughts on it for Tom for sending me this. Hopefully I'll get it this month and it'll be in my end of month vlog. This is in the INDB top 50, I believe. It's one, meant to be one of the best films ever made. And I know there was a remake with Brian Cranston or a reimagining. And Kevin Hart, was it? Um, called The Upside. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. It looks like a fun movie and a touching one at that as well. So that is it everyone, that is my unwatched movie collection. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Like I said, leave it in the comments if you've seen any of these films. Which ones should I jump to first? Which ones aren't very good? Although it won't fill me with much confidence. Hope you all enjoyed it. And yeah, I'll, I'll get back to you all, I promise, like usual. So thanks so much everyone. Take it all easy. I'll see you all next video.